Bird Talk, What Birds Are Saying and Why, written and illustrated by Lita Judd. Bird Talk, Bird Talk, What Birds Are Saying and Why, written and illustrated by Lita Judge. If you are wondering, what genre is this book? This book is actually nonfiction, and it's going to be about the way that birds communicate in amusing ways. I noticed that the author and illustrator has drawn these birds in a funny sort of way. Let's find out how and why birds talk to each other. We will also learn other ways birds communicate. Chirp, warble, quack, coo, rattle, screech. In backyards, meadows, and forests, the air is filled with bird talk. But what are they saying? Have you noticed the birds in your backyard or in your front yard lately while you've been home? What kind of birds are you seeing? Take some time later today to observe birds and see what kinds you can find. Pick me! Male songbirds go all out to get noticed in the spring. War, war, war. A blue bird of paradise sings to attract a mate and defend his territory. To make sure a female notices, he flips upside down and swings frantically to and fro. The melodious song and bright colored feathers of an American goldfinch say, choose me, I'm the healthiest. Like most songbirds, the female is quieter and drabber, the better to sit unnoticed on her nest. An American robin sings hundreds of different songs. The more complicated his song, the more he says, I have the most experience, I'll make the best mate. I'm the strongest. Notice the way the words, I'm the strongest, are written. This kind of writing shows that a new section of the book is starting. We call it a heading. The next pages will talk about some male birds, what some male birds do to attract mates. Their mate is their partner. They have babies together. Not all birds sing to attract mates and claim their territory. Some males strut, bang, and boom. To catch the eye of a female, male sage grouse puff up their feathers and strut like runway models. Then they make loud popping sounds by blowing up air sacs and rubbing their wings across their chest. Plop, plop, ka plop. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Wild turkeys strut as well, but their naked heads are covered in wattles that turn scarlet red. The bird with the biggest, brightest wattles usually wins. A palm cockatoo is a regular one-man hard rock band. He whistles and bobs his head. Then he breaks off a stick to drum against a tree. The message is clear to other males. Stay away, this is my tree. Let's do the blue-footed booby dance. Many birds dance to communicate with a future mate. Blue-footed boobies don't want to be confused with red-footed boobies, so the male lifts his feet proudly, showing their bright blue color. If a female sees what, likes what she sees, she joins the dance, announcing, we belong together. Western Gre grebs dance in perfect unison by running across the water like a pair of water skiers. After their fancy footwork, the partners present weeds to each other as if to say, and this is how we will build our nest. Indian Saras cranes bow and leap, performing an elegant ballet. They trumpet loudly and throw sticks into the air, proclaiming, we are paired, we will build a nest together. Their bond is so strong that they mate for life. That means that they stay together forever. Notice the heading on this page. What does it say? Turn and tell someone sitting close to you. We are going to read about how birds greet each other or how they say hello. 
Greetings! Birds who share nesting duties have a lot to say to each other. A pair of European white storks greet one another each time one parent returns to the nest. They throw their heads forward and back, clattering their bills. A male rhinoceros hornbill says, I will provide, as he brings food to his mate. The female has sealed herself inside a tree for three months, incubating eggs and caring for her young. Do you see the female bird's beaks sticking outside the small hole in the tree? When a northern gannet returns from fishing, she and her mate stand on tiptoe over the nest. The one to leave its bill pointing skyward the longest says, My turn to take off! Over here! What do you already know about emperor penguins or other penguins in general? Parents and chicks learn the sound of each other's voices. I'll bet your parents know the sound of your voice, and you know the sound of their voice as well. We're like birds in that way. Emperor penguin parents must find their chick among thousands after they return from fishing in the sea. The chicks call eagerly. In the deafening noise, the parent trumpets back until they are reunited. If danger is near, a mother, common merganser, calls to her chicks, stay close, the family swims to safety. A flamingo chick peeps softly before it has even hatched. Its parent chirps back, offering encouragement to break free from the egg. I'm not here. Some birds use trickery to protect themselves and their nests. The American bit tern has a loud booming call, but when danger draws near, she sits still as a stone. Her lie, I'm not here, is convincing even to the keenest eye. A sun bittern blends into her surroundings with striped brown and gray feathers, but if a hawk comes close, she fans her tail and flashes red patches on golden wings. Stay back, I'm a devil-eyed monster. When a fox stalks near the nest of a North American killdeer, Mama screams and flaps a wing awkwardly. Her broken wing trick says, follow me, I'm injured, I'm a better meal. She stays just out of reach, luring the fox away from her eggs. Look out! We're under attack! Within a flock, birds communicate to protect themselves. Caw, caw! An American crow shrieks an alarm when a great horned owl comes near. Instead of flying to safety, the flock joins her. They scold and mob the predator, chasing it away. But when a crow prowls for eggs, Scandinavian field fairs declare war. Chat, chat, they warn. If the intruder doesn't flee, they dive at the crow, dump, dumping missiles of poop. Sometimes it's safer to sound the alarm quietly. When a purple finch spots a hawk overhead, he makes a short seat call that says, keep quiet, danger is near. Quickly, the flock takes cover. Come on, fly! A young peregrine falcon is nervous to take his first flight from high on a cliff nest. Mother sits in a nearby tree calling sharply with food. Eventually, he flaps toward her. She continues the training until he can grab prey in mid-air. A blue jay listens for the call of his hungry youngster. The fledgling has left the nest, but isn't ready to fly. Her parent answers with tender feeding calls as he brings her next meal. Quack, quack, quack! A mother wood duck summons her chicks just after they've hatched. They can't fly, but they can swim and find food once they leave their tree nest. Where is the mother wood duck? The baby wood duck jumps from its tree nest when its mother summons or calls it from the water. 
The heading says, listen and learn. What does that tell you about some birds? In this part of the book, we will learn how some birds mimic or copy other birds and even people. Listen and learn. Some birds don't just sing from instinct alone. They learn to mimic or imitate the calls and songs of birds around them. Baby scarlet macaws learn to mimic calls the way human babies learn to talk by listening to their parents. Northern mockingbirds even mimic other bird songs. What better way to say to a mate, choose me, I'm the smartest. They can be noisy neighbors, even imitating man-made sounds like car alarms, ambulance sirens, and even cell phone rings. African gray parrots are excellent mimics. They learn to repeat people's voices. But one named Alex learned to use words with human meaning. His vocabulary of about 150 words, he could name objects, count to six, ask and answer questions, and request rewards. Wanna nuts? Whether they sound like people or sing a song, birds are talking just like you. In the back of this book, the author has included facts about each of the different types of birds in this book. The cool thing about this is it talks about their habitat and their range. The range is where you would be able to find them in our world. Here is another example of all the birds in this book. The author includes a glossary, references, websites, and even an author's note. Remember, the glossary is like a dictionary, except that these words only pertain to this particular book. This is the author's note. Take a look at the photo of the young girl in the top corner with a parakeet on her shoulder. Why do you think the author chose to write this book about birds? Could it be related to her love or interest of birds? Think about that. Bird Talk, What Birds Are Saying and Why, written and illustrated by Lita Judge. I hope you enjoyed this book as much as I enjoyed reading it to you.